Welcome to another screencast on Git. This is Matthew McCullough with GitHub, and I'd like to talk to you today about Git enabling your projects and how that goes above and beyond what we've discussed about the basics of version control in the first episode. When we're looking at Git, the big idea here is that we actually have an implementation of the idea that we were previously calling version control. Git is one specific flavor of this. There are many options out there today, but it's a very popular one and very successful one. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why, revealed in three parts. First and foremost, many version control systems require a complicated server setup to be effective. On the other hand, Git is actually locally enabled, meaning that you can version control items just on your desktop, just with a single piece of software available at the command line. You don't need any complicated server software, but if you want to use a server component to collaborate with your colleagues, that'll be available in a few minutes. Let's revisit a diagram that we've already examined before, and that's one of history. This idea that we brought up in our version control podcast described the idea of having many people contribute to a project. If we look at that from the perspective of just a single computer, a single person sitting at the desk at any given point in time, this is relatively simple. You could even take turns at the keyboard and the implementation in Git at the command line for someone that we'll call developer Dana would look something like this. It would start off with the initialization of a project, the setting up of the Git control structures. That's done at the command prompt with a simple git init and then the name of the project. That creates a directory, a folder that can contain the project files as well as the control files that store the historical elements, the history snapshots of your documents, images, source code if you're working with a program. git add is the command that actually notices the files and puts them into a kind of holding zone ready to permanently be committed and then nicely aligning with the word that we just used, commit is the keyword that actually permanently records a historical version or snapshot of the files as they exist at a given point in time. That's a simple use of Git, but we want to take it to the next step when people are actually collaborating in a fashion when they're not at the same machine, when they're not working at the same time, and it actually gets quite a bit more complicated from the conceptual side, but hardly any more complicated from the implementation side of Git. Git is designed from the ground up for team collaboration. Every feature that you see is centered around making this experience simple, easy, being effective for even hundreds of developers. Having this at the core of our tool takes us back to that picture one more time people working in sequential fashion. However, they really don't work in sequential fashion. It's this more complicated diagram. It's people working at almost different times, but with overlaps, and all wanting to bring back their work to the home base to have it incorporated in the primary copy of the project. While that's a wonderfully simple way to describe it, it doesn't really model reality. Reality is that people are working at different times, but with slight overlaps, each taking a personal copy of the files as they see them at a point in time, performing their own enhancements to them, but then bringing them back to the central copy and wanting to unify, the technical term is merge, those changes with the primary copy of the documents, the images, and the source code. It's this overlapping of time and almost parallel work that complicates a lot of matters. The implementation is significantly helped by Git. With an example that uses both Doug and Dana working on the same project at effectively parallel times, Doug can work on his master branch, an arm of the project, adding some new graphical work such as a logo, and then sending that to a central server, now adding that network component to the idea of version control, and then having Dana also participate, perhaps again 
at exactly the same time as the work that Doug is doing, with her contributing her feature work, perhaps some programming code, and then bringing that into the central server-based copy as well. But that last step is the critical one, bringing all the code into a unified set, merging together both Doug and Dana's work. That can be done with Git as simple as retrieving the copy of the centralized versioned files down to Doug's individual machine, and then executing a command that merges all of that work together. It'll provide help if there's any conflicting files. It'll walk you through the steps of deciding whether you want to keep Dana's or Doug's changes if they happen to collide. And in the case that they're working on similar but different files, it will merge them together completely automatically. The third category of person to speak about when discussing an implementation of Git is the person who will use it for a long time, find all the deep crevices and features of it, and in fact want to stretch it to its absolute maximum. That person is also served well by Git. Even though it's very easy for the introductory person, it's also very capable for the advanced individual. You can find that through its Unix-like structure, the ability to glue together these small programs and use option switches to control the behavior, that it suits the needs of an advanced version control user extremely well. Piece by piece adding of little segments of a document and the committing of just some of those pieces that were selected, and then a historical graphical representation that can be done even from the command line showing when people branched files, when they merged them back together, who did what when, on which date. All of these option switches, which at the moment for a beginner might seem intimidating, are actually extremely satisfying to the advanced user. Git serves both ends of the spectrum extremely well. Version control is a simple concept, but it's complicated by the work modes of today people working in parallel, sometimes on the same files. Git serves that beginning user extremely well. It serves the merge capabilities well when more than one individual's work needs to be brought together. And it scales well to the advanced user over time, wanting to have precise control over the commit and over the visualizations through a series of small commands and through a rich set of option switches. Thanks for listening to the concepts behind version control and now specifically applied to Git. I hope you'll join us for our next episode.